Hey everyone, this is Nick from Atalanta Passion with a fan's take on how the Atalanta Juventus game went on Sunday afternoon. First, out, a big shout out to the guys at Serie A sit down for, for giving me the chance to, to give my thoughts and, and broadcast and share them with all of you. But boy, what a, what a game that really was Sunday, even even though the, the draw wasn't the result we would have liked. It was a great game for the neutrals. It was a great showcase for the league and it, it had everything you could have wanted, especially that Ruslan Malinovsky goal, which... Definitely is going to be Atalanta's goal this year, unless he can outdo himself somehow. But definitely one of the goals of, that we've had in 2022, I think, across Serie A right now. But it, w- it was quite a game. And honestly, going into the match as an Atalanta fan, you have to be a little nervous. We haven't had the had the best month recently, whether it's been the COVID absences we had in January. Robin Gosen is going to enter. Duvan Zapata now out probably for the end of the year with injury. We lost Juan Musa to a questionable red card against Cagliari, and we were just pretty much thin going around. And of course, going up to face Juventus, who looked pretty revitalized with Vlahovic, Zakaria coming in and then getting some players shipped off to the Premier League for nice sums. And honestly, I wasn't too confident going in we would get the win. A draw would have been great, would have been nice, and the win would have been gravy, I think. Um, so from that standpoint, getting a pitch, getting one point on the pitch is, is quite vital especially that it doesn't allow Juventus to get too far ahead for Atalanta and what seem, it seems to be scraping up into the, the top four race between those two clubs. And it gets Atalanta on track, especially after losing twice consecutively for the first time all year. It's a really good way to, to get prepped for Europa League that we have coming up this Thursday, as well as Fiorentina on the weekend as we try to, to get revenge for the, lo- the, the loss they gave us in Coppa Italia just one week ago. But... Digging deep down into the game a little bit, it was it was the perfect formation I think John Piero Gasparini could have put out. We went with the the most unique thing that that we saw in that match and haven't really seen a whole lot this year is the, is the three midfield combination with Ramo Froehler and Martin Darun sitting a little further back, kind of in their classic double pivot role. And then of course we inserted Taylor Coop Miners up front, who not he was all over the pitch, but he he was much much more in an attacking oriented role, supporting Jeremy Boga and Luis Muriel up front, and that that's really the thing I think that helped us dominate the midfield and ultimately got us that point and got us within a couple couple seconds of getting three points. Tone Coop Miners being everywhere, the way he was able to link up with Jeremy Boga like they'd been playing together all year for the most part, and they before that match I'd only seen the field for maybe 60 minutes together as as, Bo, as Boga just came in this, this winter for us. But seeing Coop Miners continue to blossom each match, do something different and unique, and continue to grow his game is such a welcoming sight for Atalanta that we were able to, to bring in a player of that quality for the, the, for the price that we did ultimately too, and potentially and hopefully be a staple of the midfield for the next few years to come. And on top of that, the newcomer that we just had that he was linking up with nicely, <clears throat> excuse me, Jeremy Boga, we haven't really had a player as dynamic as him in a really long time, probably since Papu Gomez left. We've, we've, we had have good attacking midfielders in the likes of Ruzla Melanowski and Josip Bilicic, to name a couple, but nobody really provides the raw pace and the ability to just get by defenders at the blink of an eye quite like Boga does. And it was even evident in the match. You could tell <clears throat> even when he wasn't necessarily dribbling, he just struck a lot of apprehension into Juventus's midfield and, and defense. You could you could see, especially later in the game, they were much, much less inclined to come mark him deep. They were just like, okay, here we go. He's going to try to dribble by us. Let's give him the space. And hopefully we can uh, give ourselves a little bit of a head start if he does try to, to run up and get by us. So ultimately, he kind of was like a pressure pressure diffuser, diffuser just merely with his presence on the ball, which which is really great, especially if we're trying to beat the press like Juventus was doing uh, quite a few times in the match. That's a really key asset to have on the team, I think, going forward for us. And given he's only played three matches, I think he's pretty much cemented himself into our starting rotation going forward. Um, but with the game, I think the Ruslan Malinovsky goal is still, is still the highlight of, of that match. It was just, it was improbable and out of nowhere, he, shooting from 30 yards out and just putting Chesney like in, in such a spot of bother that like, you, you just have to admire that shot for what it is. And I think even after the game, Matias Delict went up to Malinovsky and said like, 
basically how and why did you try to take that shot? Like, how did you know it would go in? But everyone knows how good his left foot is. And this is the third time in the last four games he scored against Juventus. So he, it seems that he has, has his number against the old lady. And hopefully if we face Juventus, actually we won't face him this year. But if we face him, when we face him again next year, hopefully he has something else in the cards for that game as well. But then we, I think we, we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about that ending. Just when we think that we, we have it in our grasp and we're going to walk away with three points, we climb Juventus on the table in the fourth place with a game in hand to go. The improbable happens, and Danilo, after I think Juventus seemed like they had five or six corner kicks in the last ten minutes or so, and finally one, one was able to to go through, and you just whatever whatever it is, you just you just take it and that's how football happens sometimes. And unfortunately for Atalanta, it feels like it's happened a little too much. This is the third match this year where they've been up in stoppage time. And then a team has conceded within you know the last three or four minutes of a match to ultimately lead to a draw. This one doesn't feel like it hurts as bad just because of how vital the point was to springboard everything going forward for what we want this club to do for the, for the rest of the winter and into the spring. But it's something that I think that needs to be addressed. And I think, what I, what I really pointed, what really stuck out to me is Mario Pasolic came on the pitch maybe 90 seconds before that corner was taken to provide a little defensive security, I think, rather than Boga. And it was his area. It was his space where Danilo was able to sneak in and, and win that header. If he's on the pitch earlier, does that happen? Maybe, maybe not. But it feels like a guy who's been sitting on the bench is not able to get up to full speed with how the match is clicking and then automatically be required to go in and duke it down on headers it's it's a tough ask i think and i think maybe if that substitution wasn't made somebody else is there to fulfill to to fill in the void right there um but we can we can play ifs ifs ands or buts forever it's it's unfortunate that it happened but we'll still take the point we'll go forward we have fiorentina on the weekend we have olympiacos midweek uh with the europa league so there's still a lot of good football and i think as i said earlier it's a it's a great momentum swing to, to push us forward as we continue to, to battle on two fronts with these really important fixtures and the race with Juventus, as it seems, for that fourth and coveted Champions League spot. So that's it. Thanks, guys, for, for taking a watch on, on my reaction to the match. If you want to continue getting some, some good Atalanta news, you can follow me at Atalanta Passion. I do a lot of game write-ups and, and other articles about the club and, and what, what I'm seeing. And then, as well, the Atalanta pod that I that I co-host with uh, Atalanta Vegas, Dan Pazota. We, we do a weekly show and we're going to have, we're going to have a drop coming up soon. So please go check all of that out if you want any more news about Atalanta. And until then, ciao to Fosi.